another episode of Hillier Than Know. Today I'm with Mark Vitt. We're at Mutz & Co. And uh, Mark's got a cr quite a great story. Um, I'm really excited to share. And uh, I want to start off today just telling the audience a little bit about your humble beginnings and how you guys got your start um, into the pet world. Yeah. So it was about 12 years ago. Uh, we opened our first store in Dublin. We had just moved back from the San Francisco Bay Area. Uh, my wife had no desire to get back into the corporate world, so I went back and got a corporate job working at J.P. Morgan Chase while she started this business using her retail experience. And we saw it flourish. You know, after about four years, we we opened up a second one um, in New Albany, and that worked out. We, that became about 2016. I quit my job at Chase and started working here full time, and uh, we opened up three more stores that year, and now we've got six stores in total around the central Ohio area. That's quite a lot of growth. So you have six stores uh, in your 13 years in business. That's right. Um, so talking about Hilliard, what made you choose Hilliard um, as a location? Yeah, I mean, we, we looked at all the different places that were succeeding for us, and we liked the idea of a local community that works, that kind of supports their local businesses. Um, there's a lot of growth in that area. Um, I grew up in Columbus, and and certainly 35, 40 years ago, it wasn't what it is today. Right. But there's a lot of commerce there. There's a lot of people that are moving there. Um, and we, our business is very much centered around people who live in that community as opposed to transient folks or people who are working in the area. So sure. we, love the, we love being in Hilliard. Yeah, and there's a lot of pets in Hilliard. So. There's, there's certainly, there's a lot of that. <laughs> um, and they, they bring them into our stores, whether it's for grooming or just to pick up a treat and all those things. So yeah. it's great. We get to meet a lot of great people. Cool. Because right now, um, as we're watching this, I mean, we're under this quarantine. Um, we've got to keep our social distancing. And I know business, uh, we were talking a little bit earlier, hasn't been business as normal. And I think we've, you know, um, unfortunately, a lot of people in the community are feeling that. What sacrifices have you had to make as a business owner since the quarantine? Yeah, a lot, but we were deemed essential because we offer pet supplies like food, but we reduced our hours um, from down because we just knew there would be fewer people shopping. We closed our grooming and dog wash facilities completely because those are not essential. And then we've just generally had to um, reduce back down kind of the amount of payroll that we have, the people that we're employing, we're still keeping the doors open and trying to um, help all of our employees as much as we can, but all of the expenses are being scrutinized at this kind of downturn, sure. depressed economic time. Yeah, and I think um, a lot of small business owners, you've got to make a pivot. Um, and I know that you're actively trying to pivot in your business. And um, it's, you know, so is there any ways that, you know, the change. I mean, do you have an online presence where people can go and buy things from? Sure. Um, even before the this circumstance came to be, um, we had a curbside pickup, mm -hmm. so people can place an order online. And at this point in time, we've even made it so easy that they can just even call us, and we'll find the items off the shelf um, and take a payment over the phone. But we offer the curbside pickup so that they can come and uh, place an order, and then uh, we'll bring it out to them. Uh, and just about, just this week, we'll start offering a delivery service as well. Oh, so, wow. Uh, we've kind of had that in the works and this expedited that process. Who does the delivery? Our employees will do okay. that. So cool. we'll, we'll staff accordingly to keep the stores running while somebody's out you know, bringing goods to a local pet owner. Wow. And I think when I came in earlier today, you were on the phone with a customer and you were actually walking around the store shopping for it. I mean, we'll, we'll do what we have to do and we're, we're happy to do it. And, and I think earlier today too, when we were talking, um, I mean, we're talking about healthy pets and you know, there are furry friends and their family and things. And um, I confided you, in you with, with you that, you know, my dog has some allergy issues and you were walking me through um, some remedies and food and diets and things of that so, nature. Talk a little bit about the consulting that you do and some of the health food options you have in the store because you have such a great variety of you know, food. Yeah, and you know, and I give a lot of credit to my wife, Deborah, who, who she picks all the things that are here. Um, she chooses all the inventory and, and um, essentially merchandises everything. And then I come in and kind of help with the personnel and the marketing and such. But we do. We, we pride ourselves on being very educated and aware in regards to overall pet nutrition and the things that are critical for any dog or cat's well-being. Uh, and nutrition is a big part of that. We strive to carry 
what we consider to be the healthiest food options, uh, a lot of different choices, whether it's regular old kibble or freeze-dried and raw and all the other different things. And, and every dog is different and their physiology is different and their needs are different, allergies and otherwise, and age and activity levels and breed and size, all these things are factors that we take into account when we give you some options. Yeah, okay. you had a, a lot of like really good insight, you know, about diet, and, you know, and um, you were kind of going in depth with me and asking a lot of intuitive questions and, you know, kind of we were walking around looking at some different foods. Um, what are, so you do have some unique foods in the store. Can you share with the audience yeah. some of the things you sell? Oh, I mean, it's, you know, I think the one that, that probably that throws everybody off the most is like kangaroo. Uh, <laughs> they're so adorable, and and, that, and and we have to get past the the fact of you know what 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 the animal or the supply is. Um, it is a very novelty protein that certain dogs or cats um, need to eat because they are they've grown an intolerance to other more traditional proteins like a chicken or an otherwise. Now we just got we just carry started carrying uh, treats made out of crickets. Crickets. High protein, easily, very eco-sustainable. Is that for dogs or for cats or both? It's mostly for dogs okay. at this point, as, I, as far as I know. And I saw you even had some like duck heads. Yeah. yeah. Um, we're gonna switch gears here a little bit because uh, I think a lot of people are spending more time at home now. So uh, we're doing things that we don't typically get the time to do. Um, so a lot of people are hanging out on Netflix. Do you find yourself uh, finding, watching a lot of Netflix? Is there something else that you do at home? I don't, uh, I'm not usually a binge watcher. I usually kind of catch up on sports, but that's not readily available right, right. now. So I did, I did, uh, I watched the Tiger King thing, which has oh, taken over so and I watched, uh, the third season of Ozark, which I would highly recommend Ozark as well. Ozark's really good. That's a brilliant it's show. It's a really brilliant show. Yeah. And you did say you watched Tiger King, so I know the audience is curious. Um, I want to get your opinion. Did Carol Baskins kill her husband? I think so. Yeah. I think so. She uh, she started out as kind of in the first episodes as kind of a sympathetic character and then just got crazier and crazier over time. And then that whole story came out. I'm, yeah. I, well, I'm, not, I'm not the police or, or the law enforcement, but gracious it sure seems that way and what is what is the most unique pet you think someone has brought into your store before we did um, we had someone bring a tortoise and ask if we could do a nail trim on it and I tell you the, the gal who was there she did it um, she wow. just got down like the Dremel it's a nail file yeah. like it rounded it down and had a big tortoise and and, and did uh, did that we had someone bring a small pony into the store for like Easter pictures <laughs> last year uh, and uh, didn't do any grooming or anything like that, just came into the store, but seeing a, a, a pony walking around with the other dogs and there, you know, some people bring their dogs in that are about pony size, Big Great Dane will oh, yeah. be about the same size, So, but it was funny seeing a real live pony walking around. When the quarantine's lifted, what do you crave most to do when you get back to normal life? I, I want to get back and, you know, this sounds kind of corny, but I want to get back and help some of the other small businesses. That's good. Um, I love the, 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 the restaurant that's near three of our stores called 101 Beer Kitchen. Um, they don't have one in Hilliard, yeah. uh, but there's one in, in Dublin, Westerville, and out in Gahanna. And it, it's a very nice couple uh, that uh, we've gotten to know when, because they started their first store about the same time we started ours. And I know they've been closed down for almost four weeks now at this point and so i can only hope that their business comes back and other businesses like theirs come back but you now that's just kind of it just getting out of the house nothing really fancy and just enjoying a little well, bit of time doing something different that's the servant's heart in the end. i honestly we've when we've talked to a lot of small businesses um they have similar stories they're actually helping other small businesses and it's a community that's out there so um, that's just really cool to hear you know how you help in that capacity and and we appreciate you coming in and talking with me yeah. and, and, and promoting us and our business because it, you know, it's, it's tough for everybody, I can only imagine. And it takes an army, and that's you know, what our community is all about, so we're glad to do it. Yeah. So I would like to ask you, how can the audience find you? Sure. Uh, so the, I mean, the easiest way is, is through the website, I think, so Which is mutsandco.com. Okay. Um, you know, our store in Hilliard is right there on the corner of Sawmill, or on... Uh, Cemetery Road and Britain Parkway. 
So it's in the outlot in front of the Giant Eagle, okay. uh, right in between the Rusty Bucket and Dickies, who are two other small businesses we'll that post are kind of struggling too. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but that's it. We love. We certainly welcome people to come in and, and check us out now or down the road when they feel more comfortable, and, and we'll bring it out to you or come come and bring a dog into the store and oh, cool. walk around. Cool. Well, guys, um, this was a really cool episode. I'm really glad you got to meet Mark, and uh, if you know. Let's let's show Mark some support. So what I'd like to do is, um, you know, he does curbside pickup. So and he's going to be doing delivery. So give Mark a ring. Um, we'll provide their contact information, and uh, we really appreciate all your support. And Mark, thank you yep. for taking the Thanks, time. Thanks, Albert. Thank you.